um, they're fuming me. I'd like to bring up that it says in John's letters, I believe it is, that the one in you is greater than the one in the world. Goliath said, if you can overcome me, that him and the, that him and the Philistines would serve uh, the Israelites. But if he overcomes whoever they send, that the Israelites have to serve him. That's a very key part of this. As Jesus said, take heart. I have overcome the world. So a very key part of this is martial kind of spiritual clash. A martial and spiritual clash. Now you say, okay, well, let's have a spelling bee. No, that's not going to do it. You say, okay, well, how about we have a pie eating contest? No. How about we do it by who knows the Bible better? No. That's not how you truly get to the bottom of this. Now, if you go to Egypt where Moses, Acts 19, said Moses learned the ways of the Egyptians and became powerful in action and in speech. The Egyptians during that time were doing something called or related to the stick fighting of Tatib. If you're facing your enemy in hand-to-hand -hand combat, you need some kind of war art. So Moses would taught Tatib which is the art of stick fighting. And when it's longer version of the name, it's called the art of being straight and honest, straightforward and honest through the use of a stick, through the use of the stick. Now, Jesus was crucified on two sticks, so to speak, on a cross. The tree of knowledge, the tree of life, the sticks, spirit. He was speared. Which spear? Spear, but the spear of the world, the Roman army of the world. What it was seen as uh, the most powerful army in the world at the time, the Roman army. He was speared by the champion army of the world. And a spear has connections and its roots in a stick. The root and offspring of David and the bright morning star versus the root and offspring of the sick man's stick. The word sick is like the word tick and the word stick. Stick, sick, tick. Not a coincidence. The rhyme and reason. They purposely put that in the language, and that's a story for another day. I don't want to get too much into that because people who never grew up, who don't know what, what, what a, 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 um, a cryptogram is or an anagram is, people don't know what an occult cut-up is, they don't know why masons use wordplay, why gangs and, and police use code and so on and so forth, people who don't know anything about warfare and the enigma encoder, people who know nothing will say something stupid like, that's characteristic of schizophrenia. Because they think that it, it is impossible that a, a name has meaning, so to speak. They think that it's impossible that there's a, this, things are spelled a certain way for a reason. That words have root terms, Latin root, Roman, English, Spanish, French, Latin rooted languages. They think that couldn't possibly be. And that if you talk about the etymology, the lexicon, the linguistics of words... When it says the word was God, that you must be wrong. Let me not get too worked up here again. I'm going to try to remain calm. But you can imagine that's frustrating. It's even called a gospel. Go spell. It's called a magic spell. Magic spell and spelling. How words are spelled. Vow L. Alpha. Alpha. Bet. Betting. Alpha and Omega. Val L, but yet they think it couldn't, you know, constant, consistent, constant. It's crazy, right? And words like together to get hurt, but this is a story for another day, okay? Um, what you see is that the stick fighting is key in this. And once we get through Psalm 18, you should know for sure. That I'm Christ and there's no other way it could be. Because you have to be serious, right? The white man has a circus, right? Where, you know, there's strong men, there's tall man, there's circus midget. These things are, you know, and of course they mocked people. And they mocked black people with, with a circus-like activity of black faces. They're circus freaks. The word demon is, is an anagram for odd men. Odd men. Weird. Weird frat nerd faces to face someone versus making a weird nerd face and being a groupie and just harassing them because you never grew up and you made an ass of yourself. So you're harassed. And you're
you're fixated on a female's ass. So you harass, harass. You see how that works? Sad, right? Think about it. Now, because I lost my chain of thought, everyone sinks lower who's outside of the divine order. Because one who's slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. Whoever doesn't gather with me scatters. You're part of the world effort to cheat me out of my right to lead and to try to confuse my speech. So let's look at how righteousness and justice comes together. Martial and marital, the bridegroom, the bridge room. Okay, martial is marital scramble. Martial also means to order, to arrange, not just martial arts, court martial, right? The army of God versus the armies of the world that are cut down and go down to the realm of the dead because they did not put God first. Just their theater arts, their propaganda, their stupid role-playing games, and their silly cults and organizations. So, we see in Psalm 18, it talks about God come down in a cloud, but we're going to put that together later with the cloud scriptures that I'm going to go over later in this series. I've already made videos about this in the past to help you understand how the cloud is referring to a collection of water and it's righteousness that is, is it's zeal for the Lord, right? It's being enthusiastic, being you know, zealous, being a religious, being, being, having zeal for the Lord and kind of gathering it with mental clarity, with focus, moral intensity, okay, into martial arts strikes. The word striking is like the word tries king, king tries, okay? And so, you know, David was a warrior king and he faced Goliath and went on warrior missions, okay? But what missions? Military missions? No. Police missions? No. Martial art contests, you know, in, in the Olympics or something? No. Things that had religious implication and significance. So verse 20. The Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of the cleanness, excuse me, the cleanness of my hands, he has rewarded me. So the Lord has rewarded me. Excuse me, the Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has rewarded me. Think generational ill-gotten gains and generational mediocrity, right? These things affect you. If you just play stupid and leverage your privilege, God's not going to choose you kind of thing. Hello, right? It's in the true and false prophets section and the true and uh, uh, false disciples section. In the same chapter in the New Testament, where it says, do people pick grapes and figs from thistles and thorn bushes? No. Okay? You look to where people are righteous for God's righteous one. God will not be mocked. You reap what you sow. And the word reap is an anagram, the letters rearranged, for rape. If you sow rape, then you, you're like raping your daughter and your family members. If you deal in rape by deception and don't tell the truth about who I am and don't obey God through me, then you're raping your own family members. You may as well be raping those kids in the church and the Boy Scouts and then everywhere else to get raped yourself. Verse 24, the Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. So the Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness was verse 20. Verse 24, the Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness. He goes over it twice. And of course, the hands, the striking hand, the right hand of God, the cleanness of my striking hand. You know, what am I fighting for? Am I fighting for a corrupt nation, for a criminal gang, for a cartel, for a group of bullies, for for an unfair criminal business, you know, for a family that's, that's outside the divine order? So how clean are my hands? If you're, you're giving people a hard time and resisting them and, and, and haggling with them and, and, and struggling with them, just so that you can live and your family can live, your hands are not clean. So it's called the right hand of God, the hand of God, the lead hand in sparring, leaders and lead hand. To the faithful, you show yourself faithful. To the blameless, you show yourself blameless. To the pure, you show yourself pure. But to the devious, you show yourself shrewd. So how have I shown myself to the enemies of God? Well, I'll say it again. After I'm gone, men, women, and children, 
everyone who will ever live after I'm gone, except for my parents who are blameless, okay, and anyone who scrambled to obey God through me, they're not allowed to reproduce. No one should reproduce no matter what. They're cut off from God permanently. 10,000 years from now, if people are still here on earth, they're cut off from God. Okay? That's an example of shrewdness. See, where's the mercy? I said, you did the wrong thing. You and Rosh are cut off. You, you're a part of the spirits that persecuted the righteous. You're slacking your work while the righteous are being screened out. Well, you and Rosh are done. I don't care if they're the cutest kids that ever lived. Cut off. To the devious, to the rebels, to the wicked, to the idolaters, to the sexually immoral, to those who are slacking their work, to those who uh, uh, scatter, excuse me, instead of gather. God's spirit is shrewd. David striking down Goliath. You save the humble, but bring low those whose eyes are haughty. You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. So what is this lamp that they're talking about? The ten virgins, the oil, and the lamp. The light of the world. Put a lamp on its stand for all to see. Put a lamp on its stand for all to see. I'm sure we, if you're a Christian, we can all agree that if that lamp is a warrior spirit and it's a royal African falcon martial arts spirit as Hebrew is an Afro-Asiatic language and Horus was superimposed on the Son of God. The original form of Horus is the Son of God, but all the later forms are superimposed on it. That's the idea of a morally precise justice, God of martial arts, African martial arts, war arts, martial arts, okay? A God of love in a sense because justice, love, true love must come from justice, Okay? That if that lamp is a warrior spirit, it's every Christian's duty to scramble and obey God through me and acknowledge me as Christ. And that's just one angle that leads you to that unavoidable conclusion. Well, let's see, next verse. So the first verse, you know, 28. You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. Next verse. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With your help, I can scale a wall. So his lamp is burning. God's in the lamp, right? He's in the light of God is shining through him, and he's being a lamp of, for God's light. And with God's help, he can advance against the troop. So it is a warrior spirit. Another version says, or run through a barricade. But it doesn't matter. Because there's countless scriptures in this chapter and throughout the Bible that make it clear that it's a warrior scripture, a warrior spirit, like Exodus 15, 3, the Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. And other scriptures that we'll get to shortly. Isaiah 30, for example, his arm coming down with raging anger and consuming fire with cloud burst, cloud burst, cloud burst, thunderstorm and hail. Isaiah 28, 17, just a few chapters before, it says, Hail will sweep away your refuge, the lie, the spirit of God, the warrior spirit of God, his arm coming down with raging anger and consuming fire with cloud burst, thunderstorm, and hail. So that collection of water, that cloud that Jesus comes back on in the story is the martial arts spirit of God. Hebrews and afro asiatic language. Nimrod was before Abraham. He was a mighty, he was the first mighty warrior, the first and last mighty warrior before the God. Moses learned martial arts in Egypt. Joseph, Mary, Potiphera, the daughter of, excuse me, Asana, the daughter of Potiphera, the high priest of On. Also known as Heliopolis. Because the Greeks had a sun deity called Helios, and they worshipped it, uh, you know, in, in church on Sunday, where Circe, you know, where you get church from Kirk, from Circe, and you get Circe, who is uh, said to be Helios' daughter. And of course, that's pagan stuff superimposed on important things. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He, sh he shields all who take refuge in him. For who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my, my way secure. He makes my feet like the feet of our deer. He causes me to stand on the heights. So God shields, right? The sovereign is also referred to as a shield, okay, for his people. God shields them. God arms him with strength, keeps his way secure, the way, the truth, and the life. He makes my feet like the feet of the deer. He causes me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. We'll get to that in the next part. My arms can bend a bro of bonds. It is a warrior spirit definitively. This is a Psalm of David. 